The opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of Eastlink TV, its sponsors, or partners. Hi, how are you doing? My name is Sean Barrett, and this is a new show on Eastlink called Northern Songs. What we're going to do is highlight local songwriters, people who are writing, performing, and producing their own music. Uh, in the 20 years that I've worked in Sudbury, in radio, and also sharing the stage with many great musicians, I've always been really struck by the amount of talent that's here right in our own backyard. And it was time to highlight that and maybe encourage you to go out and support these artists when they're playing live, pick up their CD, maybe even legally download their music. And I'm delighted that uh, my first guest is Matt Foy. Matt? How are you? It's good to see you. Good to see you. Um, Matt, and we've been friends for uh, going on 20 years. Yeah. Um, we met back in the, I guess we'd call it maybe the post-grunge, uh, pre-Nickelback uh, phase of, <laughs> of, of, uh, of music. Yeah. Uh, everybody was, was writing and, uh, and if we were recording at all, uh, it was generally sort of that pop rock alternative yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, the old, uh, the old Hamilton, Hamilton sound. The Hamilton sound, that's right. It was, a, day. it was a golden age for it Canadian was. music. It was. Absolutely. And you had a band called Animal Farm. <laughs> Certainly. Back then, I was, in, I was in a band called Fat Freddy's Cat. With my brother, um, Darren Foy. With your brother, that's right, Darren. Yeah. Um, so how would you say that your music has progressed from that point, if we take it from you know, that sort of pop alternative stuff that everybody was writing back then? Um, well, way back when, I was just sort of trying to get uh, my point across as loud as possible and as melodic as possible. And uh, it just sort of lent itself more to the uh, a thousand chord um, pop harmonies, stuff like that. The people that I, was that I was surrounded with, they all played the same style of music. Mm -hmm. And then eventually from there, from that band, uh, a 180 straight into uh, reggae. And ever since then, it's been no going back. And we, I kind of went down that road too at one point. What, you know, for people who are not that familiar with reggae, why don't you give them a little taste of what that <laughs> might, you know, sort of. So it's, uh, it's the Jamaican style of music. You've also mixed that with some surf on a lot of your surf. Albums, yes, right? yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I don't really stick to one style when I'm writing. It's just sort of uh, the continuity side of things is not that important for me. I just tend to, if I write something and I like it, I keep it. Uh, whether it's um, like Dust Bowl Country or ska music or reggae or punk or surf or hardcore it doesn't right matter on. what it is yeah well we're going to listen to a little bit of uh, of your music we're going to have you play a tune and then we can come back and talk about some of the stuff that you're doing right now perfect in the studio all right all right <laughs> So Matt, listen, that was uh, awesome. Um, that one came from Shine. This is the second disc. Second disc. And that one was called The Missing Link, right? Yes. Yeah. So that would be a surf song. 
That would be like we were talking that about before, right? That would be a 50s surf okay. Link Ray song. Right. Sort of but deal. you don't, as you were saying before, you, you don't really pin yourself down to any specific style. No. Um, there was, there was, this was the first one. This was the first Matt Foy. Mm -hmm. um, this one was Shine. And now we've got the Micro Moog dub. This is a download card. This is the Wave of the Future right here. Wave of the Future. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about being in the studio. You record all your stuff. You're a multi-instrumentalist. Yes. So I do everything. I do uh, all the drums, all the bass, all the guitars, all the ideas, all the vocals. Um, with the exception of a few things here and there from mm -hmm. uh, like uh, you know, hand claps and stuff like that with friends. But uh, beyond that, yeah, I do everything myself, uh, which is sort of a pickle when I try to do a CD release party. Because then I don't <laughs> have a band, but I managed to get some of my friends together and we uh, get out and, and do a really good job of, of the records. How does, uh, how does the writing work for you? Do you write a lot when you're in the studio? Because, I mean, it must be different for you. It's just there's no dynamic. There's you mm -hmm. and your multiple personalities. <laughs> with each other. Well, I, don't, uh, I, I certainly don't hold myself to an idea. So if I do have an idea that I went in with, if it's not working, uh, I'll completely change it or scrap it. Mm -hmm. So there, on Shine, there is a song uh, that started off as something completely different. And then one night I just got frustrated. I was by myself and completely rewrote it, and that's what ended up being on the record. So yeah. And this um, now moving into lately, you've been doing this dub music, micro dub, dub. Yes, dub. yeah, so dub reggae. What uh, what was the progression there? I mean, because the the first two the first two albums there was you know surf, there's reggae, there's you know pop, there's a lot of different stuff. They're really cool albums, by the way. I've got them both. Um, and then this one. Um, kind of came a little bit out of left field. Well, for me, anyway. <coughs> but mm -hmm, yeah, um, well, dub uh, dub reggae is something that I really wanted to try. Uh, and as a uh, somebody from Northern Ontario, it's certainly I, I don't have a lot of people to bounce the ideas off of because nobody else really is doing that up here. So mm -hmm. um, I did uh, get some help from Dave McKinnon uh, from Toronto. He came up. Uh, to do the actual record itself with me and we did the live recordings and then to tape and then we physically manipulate all the sounds as we're recording it into uh, Pro Tools. So is this a natural progression for you do you feel I, like or just something you wanted to do? It's something that I, that I wanted to do and okay. then I'm in the process of finishing another one uh, all right. which should be at the beginning of February. And what's the uh, recording process been like for that? Has it been different from the last one, or is it? No, uh, it's 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 more or less the same. Okay, where um, are you doing it? Uh, Cosmic Dave's. Very nice. uh, my last uh, three recordings have been there, uh, recorded with you mm -hmm. uh, at, at Cosmic Dave's. Thank uh, you. Yes, yes. Many uh, many Brian Dunn, uh, Jesse Burnett, uh, Megan Lickley. Uh, so many people's records. Are you uh, are you finding that you're kind of uh, in demand now, just because you're the grandpa <laughs> of, the, of the music scene? <laughs> well, it's it, it's funny. I, I seem to, uh, if I want to play guitar, I have to write a record. But if somebody needs a drummer, they tend to call me for mm -hmm. some reason. I guess I'm easygoing or something like that. And uh, yeah, you are, I guess. Do you see yourself going back to uh, the Animal Farm days and making a pop record anytime soon? Uh, you never know. You never know. It, it depends on uh, depends on what your on where my my head is at. Right on. Yeah. Well, listen. Thank you very much for watching the first episode of Northern Songs, and thank you, Matt, for coming in. Thank you, Sean.